Chicago police facing yet another federal lawsuit over allegations of a bad raid and misconduct by officers. CBS 2 investigator Dave Savini joins us live outside the federal courthouse. And Dave, you've been exposing these bad raids for two years, and it just keeps happening. Erica and Brad, sadly, these cases are starting to sound alike. Police accused of repeatedly raiding the wrong homes and pointing guns at innocent families. You still see the images? Yeah. You still see the guns? Yeah. Jasmine Vale says moments from the night a team of Chicago police officers wrongly raided her home keep replaying in her mind. I was in the back room, so when I had came out, there was just a bunch of men charging at me. You are watching video recorded from her security cameras when the raid occurred back in February. Listen, and you can hear the sounds of police breaking in. Her four-year-old daughter was in the arms of her grandma, 70-year-old Kami Lazar, when it happened. And they had guns? Yes. And you had your granddaughter Yes, in yes, the like this exactly. Officers then moved closer and they trained their guns at point-blank range on this grandmother and her four-year-old granddaughter. These accusations of another innocent family held at gunpoint during another botched police raid are part of a federal lawsuit filed today against the Chicago Police Department by attorney Al Holfell Jr. He now represents dozens of children and families whose homes were wrongly raided. He said to get the F on the ground and then called me the B word. The CBS2 investigators have been exposing these kinds of cases for two years. What did you see? One of them had a really big gun and he held that towards me and told me to get on the floor. So I just did what he told me to do because I was really scared. What were you feeling when you were down on the ground with guns pointed at your head? Fear. No arrests were made, no guns or drugs recovered. She says the man they were looking for, Kami Lazar's 33-year-old son, hadn't lived in the apartment for years and resides in another state. But the apartment was ransacked, and even her daughter's toys were broken. Now, she says, her child is afraid of police. She started locking, like, the front door, the back door. I think um, she's scared that that might happen again. The lawsuit also alleges the officers didn't wear body cameras as required during the raid. So the only video the family knows exists is from Jasmine's security cameras. Police didn't notice those cameras until they finally left. I just went through something very traumatizing. I went through something that no parent should feel, and it was the worst feeling in the world. Now, this is also a case where police are accused of just taking the word of an informant. Now, we did reach out to the city law department. They say they can't comment because they haven't received a copy of the lawsuit yet. We also didn't get a comment yet from CPD command. Back to you, Erica. Well, Dave, your investigation has led to many changes. One of those back in January now requires two uniformed cops with body cameras to be a part of every raid team. How do they not have body cameras if it's the policy? You know, that's a good question. I think an even bigger question is where was the supervision at this raid? The, the, the search warrant that was left behind is supposed to be signed by a lieutenant or above that rank, a lieutenant or above. This one had no signature. So maybe supervision had something to do with this. All right, Dave Savini, investigator, thank you.